the, and I mean, all the different conspiracies, but the big conspiracy, the nastiest, sneakiest one, doesn't even know it's a conspiracy. Ah, it's like the conspiracy of dunces, you might say. But even then they trick you because they're not really that dumb. <laughs> uh, it, it sort of brings up, I guess you could say, that brings up the George Bush question. A friend of mine, Dr. G. Gordon Gordon, you would think would be a worldly subgenius, was, uh, he was saying, oh, Bush is nothing but a, he's the blandest of all the bland, stupid pinks, and that's why he's, you know, at the top of the shit heap. And uh, I was going, oh, that's just what he wants you to think. You really believe he's that bland and stupid? No, man, he's, he may act that way, but the guy you see on TV isn't the same as the, the guy in the Skull and Bones Society behind the great vault made of subgenius skulls. And he's a rogue subgenius. Most of those guys are, I think. Those guys that run the world. And uh, they're, they're unsavable now at this point, but they started out, like most subgeniuses, uh, hateful of the normals. And that's why they're doing what they're doing now. They just don't have fun. Too late for them, but uh, as we'd like to brag, you know, they have the conspiracy back between U.S. and Russia at least have probably a hundred thousand armed nuclear weapons, and the Church of the Subgenius, we only have three. Today, the, the Discordians, well, whichever Discordian individual it is, we don't know. I don't. Not supposed to know. Uh, have they two? They have two nuclear weapons. And I told them which Disneyland's ours weren't in. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, there's a. But let's see. I. This is a, an unusual rant for me because I decided to throw out my canned Stang rant. Uh, just because it seemed like this audience is healthier than what I'm used to. Yeah! It really is. But I, I'm more used to gazing out upon science fiction crowds or else diehard subgenius only crowds. And it's like a, a sea of bespectacled white male faces. Yeah! They all look like me. And that, you know, that's, it's a, it's a, a drink, we don't want them all to look like Bob either. You know, that's what Bob wants. This is how tricky the conspiracy is. I realized today that had it not been for the Discordians, the, Bob wouldn't have allowed the Church of the Subgenius virus loose upon the world because the dis Discordians are the guarantee that the Church of the Subgenius, if it became taken over by the conspiracy and became the one world religion, instead of the one, the good one world religion, uh, it, the, 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 at least the Discordians could destroy it. But, uh, yeah. And I don't, that has something to do with something. But I, I, I think what we, what I wanted to do tonight, what, we've got so many wonderful props. I wanted to do a, a visual aids display. And uh, I, our honored guests here, now these aren't, I don't be frightened, dear friends. Don't, uh, step right up and see the amazing uh, Overman. And please step up, you uh, creatures, if uh, possible. And somewhere we have to, uh, excuse me. Don't You notice Bob is represented here. Of course, this is not actually the true Bob. This this Bob is blind. There are no eye holes in this map. In a way, this is symbolic and mindful of well, it's obviously the old blind leading the blind theory. But also, it reminds one of the old hymn, "On and Off the Road with Bob." We are walking. Here we'll okay. The uh, in the center we find. Excuse me, Bob. Bob, <laughs> Bob is, You know. He, we, Praise Bob. Bob can take many forms. <laughs> or as Praise Bob. I hate oh, I hate to do this, but I have to make the pun on the old joke. He, not yeah. Not only is Bob a woman, but 
she's black. <laughs> bottom of the heap, the lowly subgenius, in it, it's slack. It is, in, in, obviously, it is aware of slack. If it has no slack, at least it knows what it is missing, which is the important distinction between it and the, well, what was the human, now the, shall we say, the symbolic representative, Pink Boy. <laughs> Dumb shit, and they'll treat you as a people! Like a what? A dumb shit! Oh, well, I mean, okay. Uh, you know, the, the, the frightening, and yet so friendly looking, by you would hurt a fly. The, which, which way shall the world go? On the other hand, we have the potential of the subgenius who has gone through the training in Dobbs Town, who has had the operation step forward uh, to demonstrate the gigantic foot plan, the soul. This is a master of mystic soul travel. Because when the, the overman, the or uber woman, as the case may be, those who are involved in the word of Bob completely, there's only one yet. Dr. Philo Drummond, who couldn't be here tonight. Uh, he, he, the soul gland, you see, is, is actually the seat of the soul. And it is, uh, ironically enough, the soul of the foot. The mystic soul travel is the motion of the soul into casting out the false prophets, one might say. These are crude metaphors I'm using. I understand crude or positive, but... Get crude, get crude. But... The, uh, well, there are certain things that I'd like to add to this costume, but in the name of decency, I would not want to but embarrass any humans who are here why by, the tool of when the they realize genius. they only have one. <laughs> now, what, on July 5th, 1998, at 7 o'clock in the morning, and, and it shifts with the time zones, uh, the, the men from Planet X, as men they be, uh, they're not, uh, the ones that make all the other UFO critters you've heard about this weekend look like us. Uh, the, those creatures shall come to this planet. They will find either a planet of this or a planet of this in control, one or the other. And, and depending on what they find, there will... Well, let me put it this way. The... Uh, when the exes come to planet Earth, they're going to have the same choice that you or I would be faced with were we to find a dog who'd just been hit by a car on the side of the road, crawling along with a broken back, obviously not going to live very long unless it gets immediate medical attention. That's what the, the men from planet X are going to find on this planet. They're going to have to decide whether to uh, take the dog to a vet, get blood all over the car, probably get bitten in its terror, Forget it, just leave the dog to slowly die in pain or take the gun from under the back seat and put the dog out of its misery. Which will it be, dear friends? Now that's largely up to each one of us in our individual way. It has nothing to do with your politics, because when it comes down to that, you know, that's just a big scarecrow. They're always putting scarecrows up for you to throw tomatoes at. And uh, the subgenius view of politics, of course, involves well, they, they've got it set up where you think there's this center and there's this right and this left, and that's true, but it's actually more of a semicircle. And the right and the left, as they get more extreme, come closer together over on this far side. The subgeniuses are up here looking down on all of that with little dropping little fish hooks trying to lift the wallets out of all of those, those fanatics, those idiotic extremists, those who will not do anything. So when they, when, when those exes arrive, what, what will, it, will, will we continue to, to uh, surf the luck plane like J.R. Bob Dobbs does, and then on that fateful day, having our $20 subgenius membership cards in our pocket, be ruptured up into the escape vessels of the sex 
goddesses from Planet X to be mutated, evolved overnight some evening shortly after X Day into overmen and uberwomen in a, an endless subgenius paradise of infinite slack, endless pills, and sex hurt, dear friends. Sex hurt! Oh, It's, a, it's the difference between the church and the subgenius and the conspiracy as to how we want to get the planet to get there is the conspiracy will tell you exactly what to do. And it's real simple. In fact, they'll give you practically anything you want, uh, except the slack that money can't buy, of course. If you just do this one little thing, which is, of course, to give up, the church and the subgenius, on the other hand, will not tell you what to do at all. We give you credit for some intelligence. Uh, even though, uh, obviously, the word uh, sub-genius, we're not trying to claim too much, necessarily, uh, <laughs> anything below the level of genius. People get mixed up about that. They only see the word genius, and they, they miss the prefix part. It's, it's uh, as Bob said, intelligence doesn't have anything to do with it. It's uh, a common sense, what we're talking about. Common sense, sense of humor, and dollars and cents. Uh, but after all, being, if you didn't know this mystic saint of sales, the traveling super salesman, upon whose wheeling and dealing skills, the fate of this planet depends. Praise Bob. Now, uh, all right, I think uh, you, the, most, the, the props, the human props, can now take the dripping, soaking uh, mass off if you want to. You don't have to. It's, I thank you. Let's have a hand for these sweaty... Ceremony. Uh, a little bit later on, get get greased up. Be ready for that. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's um, you know, Bob. It, Bob the church has actually been around for a long time since uh, 1953, when Bob, while tinkering with uh, like he was trying to invent television. It had been invented. He was trying to build his own, and he was suddenly. Well, it's what we call the divine immaculation of Bob. He was seized up in the spirit by, at the hands of Jehovah One, the supersonic Nazi alien hell creature space. No, I'm getting mixed up between the years. And it's one of those uh, really serious, scary patriarchal gods from a corporate sin galaxy. And that, it showed Bob, for reasons we still don't understand, that uh, the, the, there was this conspiracy of the normals who were mindlessly holding, uh, sapping off the slack of the abnormals. And by abnormals, we don't necessarily mean somebody looks weird or even has to behave weird. Some of the subgeniuses have to look and act more normal than anybody else because they have more to hide. Look at Bob. He looks like a Republican. He might be a Republican. But he, he evolved for everything. Of course, you know, if he is everything he says he is, he could be world overlord right now, and we wouldn't even know it. And neither would he, for that matter. He, uh, he wouldn't be to. He cannot look, be glorifying brains over common sense because Bob Dobbs is not a smart man. That is not. In fact, I mean, look at him. He knows something we don't know, but he. He knows it in that special way uh, that only somebody with that kind of gleam in their eyes can know. He, he, he had discovered that conspiracy of normals, and when he did, uh, just, he found it, and uh, it's hard to imagine Bob making this kind of plan. I often wonder about that. He, he founded our church on his, like, a shifting, sandy beach of hypocrisy. I mean, after all, you... Bob Hey, you know, but Bob loves... Ah! Can you run that back for us? Okay. Yeah, when you, when you take, now this is true, when you take the phrase, you know, they're talking about backmasking on these, these albums, these, these uh, demonic, uh, satanic albums. And if you take the phrase, Jesus loves you, and play that backwards, it sounds like this, we smell sausage. <laughs> you can probably 
run that, what I just said backwards, and come out, Jesus loves you. We smell sausage. When you run, you take the phrase, Bob loves you, and play it backwards, it says, we smell Bob. When you think about that, Genius time of year. It's perfect. It's, it's our, really our holiday, you might say. And uh, I, I was listening to Christian talk shows all week. Oh, they were God. screaming and yelling. Up, and uh, I ended up, for Halloween, I took my family out trick or treating on the richest block in <laughs> Dallas. And a lot of people go there because they have great sets out front and they give you a lot of candy. Uh, but our motive was a little different. I was standing on the street corner wearing that human mask, or the subgenius mask, actually. The, the one with the long teeth. I was standing, at, standing there going, Halloween is the devil's holiday! Don't wear a mask on Halloween! You're just playing into Satan's hand! Let's take this holiday back for God! Take it, it's founded on a pagan holiday and leads children into the cult! Somebody called that Bob Larson talk show and said, well, I'm with you, Reverend Larson. I don't, I won't let my kids go to see those horror, those Freddy movies or, or dress up on Halloween or any of that stuff. And when I hear that, I say, praise Bob. That's $20. I've got about 10 years. Yeah, we don't, that's right, we don't have 10 years. We don't have 10 years. We've got to raise all that money quick. Most of you here aren't members. There aren't full pay $20 members. You're going to be pink in Bob's eyes on that fateful day. You're going to be pink in Bob's eyes. Even if your people will take your money. But, but see, the, the tricky thing about this particular religion that throws some people is that we we defiantly continue to believe in the God that does not want us to believe in. And another thing that we're trying to do that, that pisses some people off is, well, uh, in our case, we're located in Dallas, Texas. It's often called the buckle on the Bible belt. We're trying to unbuckle that Bible belt. Doesn't look like a real. 
real expensive watch. But, uh, okay, now, uh, Susan. Now, you don't know me or anybody in my ministry, do you? I just want to make sure that you're not. You've never heard of the Bibles before, and you, you don't know anybody else. All right, now. I can't hear any shit. What, what else do you need? Would you rather be smart or lucky? You're lucky, lucky, lucky. I'd rather be lucky than smart any day. Right on! Yeah. Yeah. Right on. That's the Bob. it up on Bob here. Yeah. developing their time control. We like to think of you know, time travel and stuff like that. We're working on it. Your last donation might be the thing that pays for that last little part we need. But well, we'll get into that later. The, uh, the conspiracy con has a form of time control whereby they make you a slave to this little thing. It might as well be a handcuff connected on the other hand to, on the other side to your job or to when the food stamps run out or to <laughs> your Jones comes on. It's got a, you know, they've got you tied up one way or another with with their idea of time control. They're going to control your time. Let me show you difference, pardon me. The, the uh, some genius form of time control.
bursting with desire to preach or testify, make witness unto what that man Paul. Oh, no, you're right. That man Bob has done for you. And I want you to come on up here. And hold everybody who wants to come up and testify. Help me, somebody. Get out of the way. I'm thankful for Bob. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Brandon, well, obviously, we have many, many people here. Reverend uh, Serial Killers Anonymous, please. Uh, I'll tell you, Bob has done a great wonder in my life. Friends, when I was growing up, everybody hated me, and I hated them back for it. Talk about it! After all, Bob told me, hey, look, these guys that hate you are dog screens. Yeah! I mean, they walk down the street to the swine yeah. trail. What do you care what the hell they think about you? Since I found Bob, I don't care if I look like the walk-on for a horror film. I'm damn proud of it. It means no one has to pay on the street. I haven't worked. I haven't worked steady in eight years. And boy, I'm proud of that. I even run my own radio ministry. I've got thousands of listeners that send me hundreds of dollars every month.
you some of the miracles that Bob makes possible. This afternoon I was on a panel, we were talking about Masonic symbolism on the dollar bill. Somebody points out there's a penis on the dollar bill. I have studied that dollar bill for 20 years, finding the Star of David on it, finding all sorts of, I couldn't find the penis. I, I, I went to my spiritual leader in the church of the subgenius and I said, why can't I find the penis on the dollar bill? He said, you need frock. replace the bleeding head of Arnold Palmer. It was the sacred willy of Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> but just the sign given unto this generation, the, our last chance for freedom. They've taken everything else away from us. Uh, Tim Leary told me recently, he was walking, uh, he was on a street in San Francisco, he was up there to give a lecture, somebody came up and started mumbling something, Tim thought he was a beggar and gave him five dollars, and the guy handed him a bag, it was full of crack. <laughs> Tim said, what the hell has happened to this country, I can't buy pot in Beverly Hills, I just get off a plane in San Francisco and I bought crack without even knowing it. <laughs> what the hell they have done? They have taken away all the good drugs and they've dumped all this lousy cracked on us. Uh, we pay what? We pay more taxes. It's the conspiracy. We pay more taxes than medieval serfs did in the dark ages. They work one month of the year to pay their taxes. We work five months of the year to pay our taxes. They're taking everything else away, and now they're trying to take our goddamn willies away. They arrested this man just for playing with his willy, which everybody does. Now, that may seem like a sexist remark, but you all know, those of you who don't have willies, you know what you play with. It's called the clitoris. Now they are trying to take that away from us, having reduced us to total misery, raising the mortgage rates higher than ever, looting the SNLs destroying the economy so that it's dead in the water, as one congressman said recently. We've got nothing left. And now they're trying to take our willies away. You can't even play with your goddamn willy anymore or throw you in jail. The only rebellion that makes sense is the right in Pee Wee Herman for president. rubber stamps made and put it on every envelope. Send it to everybody in Congress. Send it to all the newspapers. Pee Wee Herman for president. Give us back our willies. Well, 20 years we've had one president after another who looks like, who looks like he doesn't even have a willie. Now, now we've got, now we've got George Bush who got elected only because he appeals to the most mean streaks and the most puritanical middle Americans. He looks like the oh, he looks like a man who hasn't had a blowjob in 20 years. Can any country be ruled by a man who looks like he hasn't had a blowjob in 20 years?
to get into that river, you have got to use the ladle. Bob is the ladle. And unless you can grasp Bob, unless you can grasp Bob, you cannot dip into that river slack. But if you grasp Bob, all the world is yours. Sisters, I'm here, I'm gonna tell you how I found, I, I saw the true power of Bob. It was a couple of years ago, and I was driving down the road in my big gas guzzling car, using as much gas as I possibly could. Cause once all that oil's gone, there's not gonna be a gas problem anymore. And I was driving along, and all of a sudden this, this pink, this pink girl, this glory, some kind of benevolence. But not with Bob. Bob doesn't give a shit about you. He hates you. You knew how much he hates you. Ooh. So anyway, there I was, barreling towards the car at 45 miles an hour, and I called out for Bob, and you know what happened? Nothing. I, nothing. I hit that car. I told him I hit that car. Weeks later, I got an insurance settlement from that pink girl's insurance company worth more than the value of my car, and I was able to buy a bigger. Get her! The couple of poor cats!
watching out for winners. Three years ago, I was a sexual fuck-up. Oh. Oh, I couldn't get laid in my life depending on it. I went and I saw this normal pinky bitch, and she told me I wouldn't have sex with you if your life depended on it, and I said, well, okay. And I just took it and I went home. Right. I sat and I played with myself all night, and I thought to myself, God, for some sexual relief. And at that moment, Bob appeared to me. My stretch Armstrong doll, which I did. <laughs> and suddenly I was endowed with a doubly sized penis, but that was not enough for him. No, no. He told me I must remove the penis from a normal and create it and put it and transplant it on my own body. And thus we did. And just to make sure we did not freak out any of the other normals that I might give my sexual liaisons to, we went and we found the Reverend Al Sharpton. And yes, I removed his penis and grafted it onto my own body and then placed my own penis. And she told me, oh, please have sex with me. And I hit that bitch with a golf club, and I said, fuck me or kill me. Nobody didn't like me. 
I wasn't subgenius, I wasn't pink. I was fucking transparent! Nobody could even see me! So, to get a little color in my life, I took a low-paying pink job at a local retail outlet. You might have heard of it, it has its cookie slimy corporate headquarters here in the fine city of Atlanta called Riches. For two years of my life, I subjugated my spirit and soul to this slimy corporate fuck entity. And after a while, the cathode ray tubes had totally destroyed my brain and fried my testicles to where I could no longer reproduce successfully. And my slimy bitch manager, who was about four feet tall and about six feet wide, would come down stuffing banana bread into her fat face. And she would complain to me about my lack of performance on the job, my lack of meeting sales quotas and selling goddamn service contracts on Korean-made VCRs. And one day, one fine day, I looked at it, all those fields of cathode ray tubes, of shark TVs, of RCA TVs, and not a one made within the borders of the United States. Some probably not even made in this fucking dimension. Yeah. And each one of those cathode ray tubes projected a big eye. And it was the eye you see right here before you. And it split into two eyes, and then a pipe, and a nose, and a huge composite dot image that fried my brain, made every single sin have to fire simultaneously, and made me go into a three-hour-long orgasm, the life of which I had never known before. And I went up to my manager's office. I asked her for a meeting to review my personnel procedures of late. I leaped up on her desk, I zipped, unzipped my fly, and I skull the bitch. Uplifted with the image of Bob and the slack that only he can provide. Thank you, Bob. Yes, my name is Dave, and I'm sub genius. And hey, Dave. Hey, Dave. I can't see any of you because of those bright lights, but five years ago, I was pink. But I was 12, so I didn't care. <laughs> and and the next year, I found out about Bob through a book called Man Suffocated by Potatoes. And I realized Bob was my savior, but I still didn't send money. And so until today, I was still pink to Bob. But today, I spent way too much money on Bob. And now, officially, I'm a Bobby. Since then, I have sprouted two extra penises, of which neither works, unfortunately. And it wound up tied to three other people. And I have the most slack of any of them. Friends! Ah, before Bob was so fucking cool! I had all the cool punk rock records. I did not pay more than 15 bucks! Still wasn't enough. Until I saw that face. That face. A man came up to me and he said, Jim, you don't gotta be cool. You just gotta have slam. So I Never have. 
have my slack again. <laughs> and the pink boys and mediocritans can just stay the hell away from me. Sitting there in shock. 
And the next day, my friend got a job at a hot dog plant and now only eats meat and mushrooms. Again. <laughs> story about J.R. Praise Bob. Praise Bob. This is a parable I made up, not in the world. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Sometimes. It happens sometimes. Slack off. Could I get a little storytelling music, please? No! Here's a story about J.R. Bob Dobbs and the miracle of the Hohos and the Cheese Whiz. One time down in Bob Dobbs Town, sorry, they were having a debattle much like this one. And lots more people showed up than they expected. And Bob Dobbs looked out upon the masses and said, Oh, dear Lord, how are we going to feed all these people? Yeah. Eat the homeless! They searched and they searched all through Dobbs Town, but all they could find was a box of hoes and a giant economy-sized can of cheese whiz. pretty normal food for some geniuses. But there were so many of them, and all they had was the one box of hoes and the economy-sized can of cheese whiz. cheese whiz. And one of his disciples walked up to him and said, Bob, how are we going to take care of all these people? We've got thousands of people out here, and all we got is this box of hoes and a can of cheese whiz. Bob says, no problem. And he took the mystic pipe of Dobbs and he tapped three times on the box of Ho-Ho's. And he tapped three times on the can of Cheese Whiz. Praise the pipe of Bob! And nothing happened! This in itself wasn't too surprising. Because Bob is the one true false prophet. He can't do miracles. He's never tried to do miracles. He just tries to be impressive. So to impress all these people, he whipped out a hundred dollar bill and said, go down to the Circle K and buy some more fucking ho-ho's and some more goddamn cheese whips! I want you all to know that I trust ultimately in Bob Dobbs. I trust him to protect me from harm. He trusts in Bob! I trust in Bob. And all of you are probably out there saying, man, this guy's pretty damn stupid. Well, I am! I'm so fucking stupid I'm gonna do this. I've gotten in my hand a can of Drano. Real Drano! It's real! It's real! And I've got a bottle of Windex. Watch this, boys and girls. Do not try this at home. I am a professional suicide person.
that, that he was going to do that. Boy, it was Ladies and gentlemen, stupid. somebody kill that man. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, I had a prepared speech up here tonight, but fuck it, because I'm pissed off. Yeah. yeah. I'm pissed as yeah. shit. Tell us about it. You want to know why I'm pissed? Boy, that ain't your money, that's Bob's money. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. There's a lot of people out there that are, that are walking the walk, that are talking, that they ain't doing both. They can talk, but they can't do the shit. They're not following their own rules. The they have rules in this here book. It's called the Bible, there's one in every hotel room. And I know a lot of people out there, a lot of you out there, you're committing sins. You are fornicating. You are drinking alcoholic beverages. Some of you are underage and you're drinking alcoholic beverages. Some of you are spending your money on things that you probably don't want to get spent on. irresponsible behavior, I just want to say, I just want to say, keep it up! Bring them! Bring them! A lot of rules here in this book. A lot of rules in here. But they're for Christians! I ain't no Christian. Not singly anyway. But the subgenius has rules too. The subgenius has an important rule. And it's got a very important rule. It's got a really, 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 really important rule. It's got a rule. It's got a rule that's called. It's got a rule of me that you gotta stand up for what's giving you shit. You gotta stand up like Paul Onion. You gotta stand up like Elvis. You gotta stand up and you gotta say, give me slack. The rain of, of cash from the sky, the pelting of 
the preacher. Kill me on fire! Perhaps, perhaps, fight for it, dear friends. Let's just see. Burn it! Let's burn well, we it! Can burn it. But, burn it. you know, some, in some ways, money can be slack. I mean, if you can't get real slack, uh, there's nothing wrong with, you know, false slack. But this man gave, do you think it was worth five dollars? should have this five dollars for dinner. Women and these women and these men and these men. These, this couple. 
couple and these two asexual lobsters. This man and his uh, uh, large device, strange device. Uh, this man and his chair, his lovely chair. And another, we have two, two chair managers. A man and his cigar, I think. A man and his pipe. I'm the crowd of three, four people chained together in a chain of bondage. Okay, we bring all these entities together uh, in the bondage. The bondage, dear friends, of holy matrimony. For better or for worse, but not for long. matrimony to have and to hold for richer or for poorer in sickness and kinkiness for the next 24 hours. Say I do! Now you uh, women folk, uh, or things closer to women folk than men folk, let's say, and certainly you're taking these men to be your lovely wedded husbands or wives in some cases, animals, pets, and dominatrixes and uh, uh, chairs. To have and to hold for richer or for in sickness and kinkiness for the next 24 hours. Say, I do! Now, shake on it and say, it's a deal! Oh, that's love. Look at this. Lovely. Now say, I'll call you tomorrow. Now, now uh, get out the rings. You've all got your rings, I assume. Your marriage wedding rings. Or some rings. Okay, now some of you, if you don't have rings, um, this is a trick I was shown. You can easily form a simple temple of the bow, which is you form the ring, and there's the pole. Uh, we take this ring, or say fingers, as a holy symbol of the uh, marriage, as well as of the pole going repeatedly into the hole, deeply, and with feeling. Uh, 
convention. Isn't that generous? Yeah. Praise God. Oh, that will be taken outside the door. Hey, Wagner, come here. The show that we're